Good morning, first graders. Happy Wednesday. It's going to be another sunny and beautiful day outside today, so I hope uh, you're able to get outside and play a little bit and get some sunshine because it's good for you. Uh, today, we are going to be reading Moustache. This book is pretty new to our classroom library, so some of you might have looked through it, but um, I don't think very many of us have because it hasn't been in our classroom library for very long. So I thought this would be a good one for us to read while we weren't all together. Moustache. Moose had a problem, a horrible, hairy, prickly problem. It grew right below his nostrils and just above his upper lip. A moustache. That's pretty big. Not a few spare hairs or shy little stubble. No mere weak wandering whiskers on the upper lip of his moose. No siree. Moose had a big, bushy, bristly, mighty moustache. But a moustache that was burly, surly, mangy mess. And it itched a lot. Sure, he plucked and he tweezed. He even clipped, snipped, and teased. But his combs were still cowards and his breath. His scissors simply surrendered. You can see them all down here. They look pretty scared of his moustache. Moose was in a frizzy tizzy. The moustache was completely crimping his style. He was a great hoofer, but he could barely hoop in hip hop with a moustache going flip flop. He was a wonderful chef, but he simply could not flambe his souffle with all of those whiskers in his way. And he was a daring skier, but how could he downhill race with the mighty moustache blowing in his face? Moose had to do something, and soon, but what? Hmm, I wonder what he could do. After days and days of much serious thought, Moose got an idea. He crossed some hair here, he crossed some hair there, and he tied his moustache around his neck. A moose scarf seemed to be the ideal answer to his problem. It was so simple, so easy, so perfectly perfect. That's a big scarf. But then, his moustache got knotted and mangled and horribly tangled. And those hundreds of hairs still prickled and tickled. Worse, Moose could barely take a breath with all that moustache wrapped around his neck. So Moose untied, unwrapped, unknotted, and, ah, uh, gulped in some fresh air. He got another idea. He parted some hair this way, he parted some hair that way and he heaped all that moustache on top of his head. Moustachioed antlers seemed to, be the be seemed to be the ideal answer to his problem. It was so simple, so easy, so perfectly perfect, until a squadron of squirrels and one very nosy gopher moved right into the moose motel. They huddled and hoarded, furrowed in, burrowed in. So now they're making a home in his, all of his mustache hair, his moustache hair. And very, very nosy. The squirrely chitting and chatting, squeals and squawks woke Moose every morning before the crack of dawn. And that gopher was giving the moose one hairy headache. Moose needed his sleep. He needed his rest. He needed his privacy. Moustachioed antlers? Nuts, said Moose. So he unparted and unpiled, untwisted and untwined, and said adios to the hairy horns. But now what? What, what, what? The miserable moose took hold of his hold of a hunk of hair and he wrestled it. Then he roped it. He tethered it, tied it, tamed. Aha! A moose tail. Now that was so simple. That was easy. That was not so perfectly perfect. Talk about a dizzy do. Moose didn't know if he was coming or going. Backward, forward, this way, that. He didn't know which end was which. Moose had to bail on the tail. He's not having very good luck so far. And so he thought, 
and thought and thought some more. But no other idea was a worthy winner. Braids were a bother. A moustache sweater? Too sweltering. Means like too hot. Net? Not. Poor moose. His problem was truly terrible. Unbearable. Just downright sad. He felt so alone. He didn't know what else to do. Then, call it fate, call it destiny, it was probably dumb luck, but one day, Moose tripped on his moustache and had, had, and just had no time to duck. Oomph! Pardon me, pardon me, they both said as they bumped. Then they blinked, and they stared, and their hearts went thump-a-thump. She was a moose, with a bouffant so bodacious, outrageous, well, it was just plain old big, hair after hair piled higher than high, a skyscraping dew of glorious curls, a tower of swirling twists and twirls. She was simply splendid, stupendous, absolutely superb. Of course, Moose had to ask how she did what she did to get such a dew. Miss Moose winked and then whispered, just a little glue. So, she helped, she helped he fearlessly plunge a hoof into the fat pot of white gooey goop. And carefully, oh so carefully, they glopped and they plopped, they pasted and they pressed, they coaxed and curled every truly unruly wayward whisker. Around and around they tweaked and twirled those horrible hairs until Moose's once mangy mess was now a wondrous winding wave of a marvelous moustache. Moose gazed in the mirror and smiled a broad moosey smile. He was so happy, so glad, just giddy with glee. He looked dashing and handsome. Moose gushed. Is that really me? So here's Miss Moose helping him put all that glue into his moustache. With not a care for one hair, the moose paired, boogied and bopped, and their cooking was hot, hot, hot. This says hot moosterd. It's supposed to be hot mustard. Kind of funny. And chocolate moose mix. So, of course, it wasn't long after that Moose and his moustache and his beautiful bride fox trotted and tangled and waltzed down the aisle. Good hair days, bad hair days, they vowed to love and to cherish. And with hearts heaped with love and pots filled with goop, they both sighed, I do, glue, and promised to never part. It was simple, so easy, so perfectly perfect. And it stuck. Here's some other pictures. I thought Moose was just going to cut all of his moustache off. I didn't think he was going to glue it. But that's another way to solve this problem too, huh? All right, that was kind of a longer story today. So I hope that you guys have a wonderful Wednesday. And I'll see you tomorrow for another story. Bye!